Hey everyone, happy Friday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So thanks for joining me. Uh, we're going a little off of what I said we were gonna do yesterday. We were gonna quilt and work on our ABC stitch along, but instead I am going to work <laughs> on this little uh, crocheted uh, teddy bear. Uh, we're gonna visit the new baby and uh, I wanna update this bear. Uh, so it has the right letter on. So we're gonna do some crocheting tonight and we'll see how that goes. So all right, you guys, let's get stitching. Okay, so a little different than I had planned, like I said. So we are gonna take this guy here. I used to make tons and tons of these. So like the Osamara says, I love that bear. So the history of these is I used to make these and sell them like back in the like beginning days of Etsy, like, you know, like a decade ago. <laughs> and uh, uh, and then they, you know, did okay. I did made tons of them and I have a, a pile of them at home here still. I thought I had some without a letter already on, but what I would do is I may, I would make like crochet them all. Um, they have like a, a lined um, batting on the inside uh, that I actually sewed uh, like a bag for it first. And then it's, and there's a um, batting in there. He's got a cute little tail. I I put the arms all at funny, funny lengths and stuff, and um, just the eyes kind of wonky and all that. So I I uh, usually have a bunch of them blank, and then I'll stitch a little letter for it. I couldn't find any that didn't have a letter on. So I I'm gonna take this letter off, the letter D off, and uh, um, I found some of the the. Uh, green still. We actually use this green to outline uh, that punch needle uh, tulip that we did. And uh, uh, I'm going to stitch a letter L because uh, my new nephew's name is Lincoln. So I want to turn this into an L. So I haven't done this in ages and ages. So we'll see how this goes. I may actually leave. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll take this off first. We'll see. See how that goes. That might be a little a bit of a disaster. Uh, but then I want to want to kind of use this for a guide and uh, stitch the L back on. Uh, these are like great for babies because they can hold like these little arms and uh, it, it's just like they're so cute uh, with babies. So um, I have a few yet. I wanted to make sure to give one to Lincoln. So uh, let's let's uh, make one of these today. So uh, I'm gonna carefully try and snip off this D. It is just stitched on here with a whip stitch. I don't wanna accidentally cut the underneath fabric too much though, or the at all, the underneath yarn. Oh, there it's coming out a little bit. So we're performing a little surgery first <laughs> and then uh, we'll stitch an L and I, and I, don't know how I'm going to do the L. It's going to be, we're going to make it up as we go, basically. Uh, did I make the pattern? Oh, your child wants the bear now. Oh, that's so cute, Samara. I never made this into a pattern. I always kind of wanted to, but I was never, I don't know, confident enough in my crochet, I don't think, because uh, this is actually stitched in a spiral. So like I started like a little rectangle and I just kept going around and around and around. Um, and uh, typically in crochet, you make a round and then you jump up to the next round and then make another round and jump up to the next round. This, I didn't do that. I just kind of like did a spiral. So I always thought that that was like not how you're supposed to do things. <laughs> and that's how I, I did them for this. Uh, so I don't know, maybe I'll do this as a pattern sometime. It would be, I mean, they are really fun for, for little kids because they are little. I mean, with newborns, you know, newborns are extra small, so they're sometimes the size of a newborn, a really small one, but uh, they aren't that big. And, um, you know, I, I'd make it with acrylic yarn because then it's um, acrylic or cotton. This is all ac acrylic because then it can be washed and, and all that. Just stitch dies. So there's no like buttons or anything on there. Uh, I gotta cut the center off of this. Well, we'll we'll do the figure this out first. 
So, you know, this is, I'm, I'm working on this in my brain a little bit. Oh, Jenna says, oh, I love this little guy. Yeah, so, so I, I want to make a letter L. And I was going to say I could do it two different ways, but I just thought of a third way I could do it, but I don't think I'm going to do that that way. I could either make two separate pieces that this is the third way that I don't think I'm going to do. I could do like a, a bar this way and then a bar this way and then like stitch it all on. Uh, I'd like to like go like this. So I can either start on the inside part of the L and keep like adding stitches at like, at this angle, or I could start on the outside and like jump over a couple stitches in the middle and then just keep getting smaller and smaller. Um, I think I could, I mean, I don't know if there's a benefit one to the other. Um, if you think there's, if, if there's any crocheters out there and, and uh, you think there's a better reason to start, ooh, that's just coming right out. Better reason to start from the um, inside versus the outside, let me know. Poor little dude, getting surgery. I could theoretically just cut this and cut this and almost have an L, but I don't know how I'd finish the seams. I'd have to like wrap around the edges and that doesn't sound like fun. I don't think the crocheting will actually take all that long. Oh, we gotta sew it on too. We'll see how far we get tonight. Uh, if not, this is what I'll be doing in the car. Samara said it'd probably be the easiest two bars. Yeah, just to do without the um, without the jog in it. I think I'm gonna do it that way though. I li I like the idea of having it all one piece. I think I might start at the biggest and then get smaller. Because um, I think if I start on the inside, I'd have to like add a bunch of stitches to one, like into one stitch, would, which would kind of make like a little circle, I think. Which would maybe be kind of cute, but I think I'm gonna start on the outside and then skip stitches when I get to the corner. And if I don't skip enough stitches, like I'll probably skip like two stitches, but if I don't skip enough, um, I can force it where I want it to be. <laughs> Once I stitch it on, I can just like bend it a little bit more. Dang, this must be like where I wove in the ends or something because it's being a butt, not wanting to come off here. Come on, guy, you're almost done. It'd be a little less delicate, but I don't, oh, oh yeah, I don't want to hurt the green. <laughs> there we go, the light green. All right, here he is. Naked little bear now. Okay, I think we are free of the dark green. Okay, so um, let's get my yarn out here. I don't really know what size hook to use, and this is kind of all I got. Um, not one of these big ones. I'm kind of wondering if this guy's the one. I think this guy might be too small. I, you know, I don't really know how to test a yarn to a hook. Uh, I just think that this yarn looks too fat for this hook to um, use, and I think the stitches would be just, just too small, whereas this one looks um, just a little bit bigger. Uh, like it could deal with this yarn a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna make a little uh, slip stitch here. And don't come at me, or do come at me, maybe, <laughs> if you know a lot about crocheting. I, I feel like, you know, I might be starting wrong or, you know, starting the next row wrong. I feel like, you know, I do a lot of crochet, but some of the basics I feel not 100% on. <laughs> so I'm just doing a little chain stitch here to get started. 
And I think this is totally the right hook. My stitches are uh, nice and loose, but not too loose. I don't feel like I have to, um, like, I, I don't feel like it's really difficult for me to pull the stitches through. So I don't know. I'm just kind of trying to get, like, the outer outline here, I think, really. And this, I feel like, is going to grow and stretch a little bit as we go. All right, I think we need a little bit more, like maybe two more. Like I said, totally, totally eyeballing this. Hey, Cassie. And theoretically, we could always add a little bit here and there if we, if we don't like it. Okay. So, and I think I'm going to do this single, uh, like a single chain stitch. Or not a chain, a, a, oh my gosh. I gotta remember all my crochet terms now. We haven't been do doing that for a while. A single crochet, just a single crochet. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do this all single crochets. I'm pretty sure that that's what this is. This is looking pretty solid. Um, a double crochet would have um, made it more like more open and stuff. Oh, here it looks like I turned from the inside out, but oh well, we're doing outside in. All right, I think this is good. So I'm going to like to turn the row. This is the part that I, not sure I'm actually doing right in crochet, but to turn the row, I'm gonna do two more stitches and I'm gonna single crochet like the third one from, from the row here. And I'm just gonna go through the top, um, the top loop because I'm too lazy to go through any other loop, <laughs> I think. So let's just, let's just do it like this. Nice thing about this is we can just be down and dirty and just get it done. So those those first chain stitches that I did will count as a stitch, but I'm not even counting the stitches. We're free forming, free forming this. Oh, honeybee is asking why not a slip stitch? And oh, um, I'm like I'm not quite sure what you're asking. So a slip stitch isn't that just um. I keep, I'm, I'm working on a project where I'm doing double, double crochet. So I keep like twisting around to do a double crochet, but a single crochet is in. So um, a slip stitch, I think is, is kind of like this first part, right? So that's, or a slip stitch is if I go through both right away. Um, I want, I want a little bit more heft to the row. So I'm doing a single uh, chain or a single crochet, sorry. Oh my gosh. Uh, instead of just a slip stitch. Oh, I got to pay attention too. I need to like, Go up. Oh, I think I went like maybe one too far. Let's take one out. I'm just let's let's actually take this out of the out of the thing. Once we get this first one done, then that kind of determines all the other ones. So now here's where I'm thinking, okay, if I skip two stitches, then that will like angle me up. And I think, yeah, I think this is the place to do it. Oh, but we're gonna get this is gonna keep getting in a little bit. So maybe I do need the first one to be a little out. Ooh, I might have to add more, like another little itty bitty row at the top. Maybe we should have done a little bit more. Okay, but let's see, I might go one, two, three. So I'll end up at the top. So yeah, I could add a little bit more to the top. Okay, fine. We're gonna deal with it that way. So I think I'm gonna do one more stitch. And or one more single crochet. I can remember I'm gonna be losing stitches each time. So it'll like end up being here. Okay, I'm gonna do one more, you guys. I think this might be, I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm doing one more. And then, okay, so now I'm gonna skip the next two. One, two. I always find it hard to like count my or initial chain stitches too. All right, so by skipping, so now I'm gonna just keep moving on, but, but by skipping those two, I'm forcing it to bend. So now I'm bending up this way and I totally should have added a whole pile more here. But um, I think in the end, I'll just add a couple stitches at the top. So I think um, what I'm gonna do is we'll, we'll stitch up to here, then I'll do another row this way and then another row and that'll be my last row. But if I need another length at the top, I'll rotate to the top and I'll do like a couple more stitches. So I think that's that's the plan. Uh, Cassie says, what do you like, or 
What do you do like the stitches that make the corner of a granny square turn? Oh, um, oh gosh, a granny square. So that's a, a little bit different because you want it kind of open. Um, for the corners for there, I think you're just like doing some double crochets and then like making a bunch of chain stitches. You're basically making a hole and then you're doing more chain stitch or uh, more double crochets down down the other way. Uh, so you're kind of making a hole that you're going to stitch in later with a granny square. And that's not really what I want to do here. I'd like to have it look kind of solid. Um, so that's, that's why just the skipping of the stitches, because that's kind of, I don't know, ultimately pretty invisible. Okay, one more. And all right, so now I'm gonna uh, do two stitches. And I, I, I like thinking about like when you turn, you do, and this is again, may not be correct, but you do like two stitches if you're doing a single crochet and you do like three stitches if you're doing a double stitch and like four stitches if you're doing like a treble. Um, those are different crochet things. Okay, and then now I'm gonna turn different different like lengths of cro crochet stitches. So now I think because this is gonna our our like two chain stitches, I think that's gonna count as our first uh, crochet. So I think I actually have to skip the real first crochet right here, and we're gonna start at the second crochet uh, because those two chains are gonna like represent the first one. I think that's how it's done. Okay. So now I'm actually, it's the second row. I'm gonna actually go through the V right now. So both, both. Um, if you look at the top of the stitch, it does look like a V. I mean, it's kind of hard to see with this dark green. Um, so I'm going through both of those now. That's what you typically do, um, and unless you're on purpose going just through the front or the back of the stitch. Uh, but for that chain stitch, I was just grabbing one little bit of it because it's easier. Ooh, this is tricky to know though when, when the two are that I need to skip. So I think, I think I need to skip the next two. Yeah. So I'm skipping the next two. First two are here. Yeah. So I'm gonna skip those and now. I'm down on the bottom edge again. See what this looks like. When we get to the end of this row, I'll um, we'll take a peek. Okay, and actually, oh, am I supposed to go on the top of that chain stitch? I'm not sure. See, these are the, like the little basics that I gotta like <laughs> dig back into. I'm not sure uh, if I'm doing them right. I think I do need to go in that stitch. So I'm gonna go in the top of that last chain. There we go. Okay, and now let's do our two chains for the turn. You can see what it's looking like still. So this will be our last row. So it's gonna be kind of thick. Um, I'm definitely gonna need more up here. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to like pick up some stitches and go back and forth a little bit. It'll look fine though, I think. Um, and actually this is maybe, this is even kind of like wide enough, really. Hmm. I could go on the back. Like this is actually the back of the crochet, but I could just like keep going back and forth right here. <laughs> You guys, I'm almost tempted to start this over just to have it the right length right away. Because that hardly took any time. I think I'm going to start over. <laughs> but I'm going to leave this so I can use it as a guide. Because I do, I actually kind of like it this thick. I, I like it, um, I don't think I need another row. I think just like the one row, really. Uh, or like. Yeah, it's just like basically two rows. I think that's actually kind of cute. I, I like that thickness. And when we stitch it on, that's gonna add more thickness too. So um, so this was actually the bottom. 
So I, I like I like how that's looking. Like I think this is a good length. So I want to keep that. I just need more stitches here. So how do we? How many stitches do we? Do we start off with? Let's just see if we can count. Get close. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and then seven, eight. That's where we skipped. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I don't know, 15 maybe? So let's just add, I don't know, should we add another five? Yeah, let's try that. So let's do, let's do 20. Starting from scratch again. So let's do our little slip stitch. Actually, maybe I should leave a really long tail because then I can use that to weave in the end. I think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> now we're getting smart people. All right. Okay, 20 I said, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This feels like a lot. That just that adds, I think, the right amount up there. Okay, never mind, I like it. Okay, so how many did we do till we like did these two together here? So about one, two, three. Let's see. Hard to count. Let's call this one, two, three, four, five, six. And at six, or one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, about at six, um, not including the first chain. It looks like we we um, jumped the two. So all right, so let's let's do our two extra chains, and then we're gonna skip those two chains and start here. What did I just say? Seven? <laughs> I literally spent all that time counting and did not commit that to my head. Um, okay, let's call those the chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we stitch. So, okay, calling this the one, two, three, four, I think when you're stitching into the first chain row, like what I am now, I think typically you're supposed to grab like both both um, parts of the V, but that's so hard and I hate doing it, so I'm just grabbing the top. We're gonna stitch over this anyway to stitch it on. All right, that looks a little about the same. Okay, so we did six. Now I'm gonna skip the two. That's gonna make our bend. I'm just gonna count this just so I know. One. I don't really need to know. I'm going to eyeball it anyway. Not six. Um, did I compare it to the size? Gina's asking, did I compare it to the size of the D? I didn't, but... Oh, I should have done that first. I could have just counted how many were on the D. That would have worked. <laughs> Uh, I guess, you know, we might be using a different needle, but yeah, I think it's going to be about the same size. Um, so I think the D, I, it looks like I maybe did this with a, a different needle because this looks like it, or, or hook, I mean, it looks like it's a little bit tighter than, than this. Um, and it looks like I might have also done another row, but I don't know. I think it feels about the same thickness. So I think I'm just using a slightly bigger hook. Um, which is fine. And it's gonna get thicker anyway when we whip stitch it to the back. So I think I think this is gonna actually work out just right. I just had to start over, that's all. <laughs> so oh well. This this is going speedy anyway, so it's kind of fun. All right.
And we'll get this one more here. Okay, so now I'm doing my two chains, and that's our that's when we rotate um, to, do, to do the next row. And again, those two chains represent the first stitch. So where the actual first stitch is, I'm gonna skip that because that's what these two guys are gonna be. And I'm gonna go in the stitch after that. I think that's correct. So there we go. We basically, I just did one stitch, but it's basically like we have done two because I got the to, those chains and um, the next one. So this is gonna be my last row. So this is easy enough. Much easier than if we had to do like a letter S or something. And I do think I actually wrote down how to do, how to crochet some of these letters. Um, I, I do have like, I think I do actually have a little bit of instructions for this. So maybe I can look at, look at those instructions, um, how I wrote them, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, and see if there's, um, if it's legible enough to sort of, uh, turn into a pattern because yeah, I wouldn't be against against that at all. It's pretty simple. Okay, I think I'm gonna stitch this one and then we'll skip the two, which will do that like bend again. Yeah, so I'm skipping the next two stitches, so we're gonna end up over here. Wait, was that two? Oop, oop. Yeah. And I think this is gonna be. This right. It's actually going to be a little tall, but I think that's kind of cute. We'll um, take it off the hook in a sec just to like peek, but I think it's going to be just right. All right, so I'm just going to. Make a big loop here for a sec, and then we can take a look. Oh, it's still going to be backwards. Like, it's going to be the backs of the crochet because we didn't do... Oh, weird. Why would it be the back? <laughs> well, that ain't right. So, uh, it's technically the back of the crochet, which is just fine. But I think those proportions are kind of cute. Uh, it is it is tall, but I, I kind of like that. It's kind of kind of fun. <laughs> it's really tall. So a big, a big L right, right on his belly, going all the way up to his chest there. I think that's cute. So, all right, let's, uh, let's just um, get a big old piece off here again. And I'm going to just pull that through the loop here. All right, I'm not even sure I need to pin this on, but, but maybe I will. So. Um, now I'm just going to take those those big ends that I left and um, just go along this edge here, and we'll we'll just whip stitch this guy on here. And I think I am going to use pins. <laughs> it's a big L. I like it though. All right, let me grab some some pins or my and my needle. All right, we got. We got Zeb here. He's my needle holder. Um, let's just, ooh, there we go. That's a big, nice honking, darning needle. That'll be perfect. And then uh, we got Phil <laughs> here, and he's got some pins. Uh, this is the one I'm looking for specifically, like uh, T-pins for like knitwear and stuff, but I think that's a nice big pin that will work well. I just kind of want to get this bit down because it's kind of kind of curvy. So I think like that, and maybe I'll just stick another pin in here. I don't have really, uh, Phil doesn't have any other smaller pins, but he does have this crazy big pin. Let's, let's use him. There, I think that looking pretty decent. And I'm gonna just whip stitch this on there. I think this big old needle will work perfectly. So I'm going to see if this yarn can get all the way around this bottom. I'm hoping it can. I think it's plenty. And the other one will get around the top. And I'm just going to, you know, grab whatever green, light green behind here. 
and we'll just whip stitch this on. It's a rough, just easy kind of pattern. So I could do maybe a pattern for the bear, but I'm not gonna have like the entire alphabet <laughs> figured out for letters. I wonder if I might have a few though. Like if I did a crochet pattern. But the bear itself is very basic and um once you get started. Um it's beginner level, I think. This uses a single single um you'll need to know like a chain stitch just to get started, and then it's just single crochets, the whole thing. Just so it's nice and sturdy. And again, just letting, letting everyone know that since you guys are here for the live, you get our live special, special which is um, a free mystery gift when you order uh, $20 or more from the shop from penguinandfish.com. And uh, thanks again for all your orders. I appreciate it a ton. All right, that was easy and quick. Looks great. All right, so I don't want to get stabbed by this pin, but I think okay, I'm going to go in that. Eh, do I really need to? Yeah, I'm going to go in that spot one more time. Just get that nice crisp point. The bottom of the L. I feel like crochet is super forgiving, um, especially if you're like used to knits and stuff. Knits, I feel like every mistake is going to be seen, but with, with crochet, you can kind of do whatever. <laughs> like the, the stitches are so twisty um, that I feel like it's easy to kind of hide, hide things if you need to on most crocheted things. I haven't made one of these in ages though, so this is kind of fun. It's cute. I'm not sure I was supposed to stitch in that last chain stitch. Uh, I, I need to look up some basics of crochet again. Like, I feel like I learned, like, a lot of bad habits. Or just, like, not the prescribed basics. So I feel like I'm just not sure on all of it. Like, just, like, literally, like, how to, how to, um chain or how to get to the next row and like I don't know there's a few things that I just need to like literally look up the basics and you know I do like those super intense doilies and all that but you know it tells you what to do but like in just like this I can never I never know for sure if I'm doing it right but luckily I don't really need to know for for this because we just squish it wherever we want once we're at this part. All right, I actually think I can get all the way up here with the same thread, so I'm gonna just do that. I'm gonna just say screw that one. I'll just weave that in. Let's just keep going here. Why well, start a whole new thing? Actually, I was thinking this was the back side, but it's really only the back side for this row. It's not the back side for this row. I've been so used, you guys, so used to doing these doilies where you're just going around and around in a circle. So there's a clear back side because you're never, you're never changing the row to the front side. So I think I was just messing, messing with my head here. Because um, here we are switching rows each time. So they're, the backs and the fronts are combined. There's not like an obvious back and front 
So I think that's where I was a little bit confused. All right, here's a little inside bit. I think I want to put that in a little bit. We're going to go around that middle again, I think. There we go. Now we got a nice tight, tight corner there. All right, and then let's work up this edge. We still got to get like this top little bit. Too. Well, this was easy enough to do tonight. So um, I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me and doing something a little different, a little different than what I had planned. Um, I think I'll, um, we'll just finish this up. I'll weave in this end and I think we'll probably call it a little bit early tonight. Because then I'll have more time to just pack. <laughs> it's going to be an early, early ride tomorrow. But we'll get to see the baby. I did have um, blue ones of these and some like orange ones, but I thought the green was cute, so. I went with the green. This needle's working perfect for this, too. Nice, big, fat, darning needle. Okay, I think the point again, so I think I'll just go around that part again, just so it holds that nice, solidly in place, and then we'll this little top edge. Ooh, entangled. I think that looks pretty good, and I'm gonna add another one here just to make it look like it's a stitch almost. There we go. Um, and I think, oh, how should I end this? Should I just weave back and forth a few times? I think maybe that's that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna kind of crawl down here, just come up in the middle. I don't think I need to tie a knot. And then we'll just kind of come up the other way, kind of grab more threads along the way, theoretically. I think I'm doing that. And then we'll go one more, kind of grab more stitches, and I'm just going to come out and trim it. There we go. I think. That should hold in place. There. Okay, and now we got just this guy to tuck in. I'm gonna just do the same thing, kind of tuck it in and weave it back and forth. And we got ourselves a little bear. Oh, a little heart would be cool. Like a little bloop -de bloop here. Let's see, we could do that with, um. Ooh, check this out. <laughs> so I got a pile of scraps right here and on top there happens to be some red. Oh, I think this is from the sweater that we did. Um, when we when we steaked my uh, winter sweater, I think that's what that's from. Oh, it's either from that or it's from the tulips because I, I see some other of the like the tulip colors in here. Um, it might be from the tulips. We also have this pretty blue. Oh, that's too short. But yeah, I kind of like that a little. We could do like a little lazy daisy heart. How would we start and stop that in this? Without being mean, I'm not quite sure. But let's let's take care of this first. That's kind of cute. I like that idea.
good right there, but we'll go back one more direction. Yeah. Glad we started again. I I like um I mean it's still a little taller than I was thinking, but um I like it better than like adding a row on top. All right, so there's the L <laughs> on a on a little bear here. Um, so I think that turned out super duper cute. I do like the idea of putting a little heart in there. Um, just trying to think about how to do that. How do I get it to stay? But I like that it could be like just a two lazy daisies. I don't want to like go underneath, like I could like weave into the ends like underneath here and then come over here. But I think you'll see that red behind and I don't think I can just tie a knot. Maybe I'll stitch it first and then try and figure out how to secure it later. Maybe that's, maybe that's the thing. Um, so like, let's just go like right here. I'm just gonna go down here and or, you know, we could come inside, like, behind an arm. Like, normally with, like, toy making, you wouldn't see the inside, and you could come up just like this and um, secure it, like, underneath an arm or something, but it's kind of big stitches. But we'll just see. Maybe I'll just let a long piece be here, and then we can figure that out later. Um, so I do like this idea of just, like, a, like, embroidered, dabbing through there, like, an embroidered, um, uh, lazy Daisy. So, all right, I'm gonna go. <laughs> oh, it's tricky though. Let's go this way. I'm gonna go over that stitch so I know it's held, and then I gotta come up in the same spot here. Okay. <laughs> That's cute. Okay, and um, kind of, I guess, right there. Never done this before. And I want to stab through that yarn a little bit. Oop, get behind. There, that's very much an implied heart, I think. <laughs> All right, so I need to do the last part of that stitch, but I don't know, do I shimmy sham down to the back here too, then, and just kind of maybe try and tuck it in behind? The arm, I mean, you can kind of see like the red going through here, which I don't like, but I don't know how we're going to do anything different than that. I don't know. I could just like literally poke through all of the stuffing and like there's a sewn piece of like stuffing behind here. Maybe I maybe I'll do that. Maybe. OK, I'm going to do that and come out like right behind his arm here. So I'm like literally going through the stuffing and through. There's like muslin in here. I'm going through that too. And then you won't be able to see it. And then I think I might actually redo this one, do the same. So I'm gonna just pull that up. Ooh, I don't wanna ruin this stitch. It is you. Okay. <laughs> Arlene says, Alyssa, you're always up for a challenge. You got this. <laughs> We gonna figure it out. That's that's what we're gonna do. And all right, so now I'm gonna just like stab, stab through his heart, and go like back here again, and then we'll figure it out how to tuck these in once we're back there. But now now you won't see it like underneath the yarn anymore, which I think is good. There we go. Let's shape him a little bit. I mean, if this is washed, it's still all chains and stuff, but. This is actually wool though, so this might actually shrink up and, and get cuter as a heart, but dang, that is freaking cute. I love how that turned out. Just a little, little, two little lazy daisies there. You know, you can't mistake that for anything but a heart. So that's, that's cool. So, all right, now I got to figure out what to do with these guys. Um, you know, I may just stab through again somewhere else and... 
I don't know, I think that's what doll makers go. They just kind of like stab it through a few times and then that kind of just like secures it enough. I don't know, does that seem weird? Does that seem secure? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Um, oh, what's the nephew's name? His name is Lincoln. So, L, L for Lincoln. So I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna stab through this fabric again. Like I said, there's like muslin back in here. Let's just stab through to here. <laughs> I'm on the, I'm on the back at least, so. Ugh. Yeah, that's, that's, that's separate from that and not moving. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time and we're just gonna say, you secure. <laughs> and uh, I think that'll be good. Yeah, so I'm gonna just trim this and we're gonna just fluff it up and I don't think I'm gonna be able to, ooh, jeez. I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull it out. I mean, you'd really have to pick at this and even if you did, I, I don't think you'd get it there. So, <laughs> I don't know. I think it works for me. Let's do it with this other one. Anne says that this is what she would do. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, we're, we're picking there. Let's just stab through these backs a little bit again. Whenever I do this, I'm afraid I'm gonna like lose the needle in um in the the bear sometimes. Okay. Reach. Oh, he's so aggressive with these these stuffed animals until they're done. Ooh, a little bit of right there. And one more. Right there. Whew. So we are actually grabbing a bunch of stuffing and like within the bear, and that's what's kind of kind of hold this in place. So I'm gonna pull a little tighter, and um, we'll floof him out again. All right, a little puzzle of red here, but that's, no one's gonna see that. All right, yeah. I don't see, think you see that red anywhere, and we still got this cute little heart going. Um, like I said, I don't, you know, it'd be tough to like pull on these, I think, and have them do anything. I'm not gonna give it that a test though. We're just gonna let it be. But all right, you guys, I think we'll call it there. It, it's so much cuter with the heart. Uh, I love, I love that heart on there. So oh, I should probably like wrap this or something too tonight. I like to shape the ears a little bit. Face. There we go. But it's just like perfect for like little baby hands to hold on to. <laughs> so there we go. Here is our finished um, L bear uh, from the D that we started out with. I think that heart was just like such a good addition to this. And uh, yay! Now I'm excited. We get to we get to bring him this little little Teddy for tomorrow. <laughs> All right, you guys. Okay, so here, here he is. So about big as a head. <laughs> uh, that heart turned out super cute though. I really, really like how he turned out. So thanks again, everyone. Uh, and thanks again uh, for like checking out that special, ordering $20 or more from the shop. I'll throw in a free mystery gift. And uh, I appreciate all your orders this week. You guys are awesome. And I will see you Monday. So have a fabulous weekend, everyone. And I'll be back here Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Have a lovely evening. Good night.